Have you ever thought about the fact that as massage therapists, we are financially dependent on our massage clients? Yeah, scary thought, I know. Instead of looking at your client file as a legal document you are required to uphold, I would look at it as a document that actually works in your favor so that you can give better massage treatments and see the return on investment, develop stronger, longer lasting relationships with your clients and ultimately make more money. Welcome back to the Virtual Massage Clinic where we talk about anything and everything that happens in the massage treatment room from critical thinking, treatment planning, and so much more. My name is Michelle, and today we're gonna to dive in and talk about how you can use your clients' files to build stronger, longer lasting relationships with your clients. I am not talking about the soap notes. I am talking about two very often overlooked areas of the client files where you can write down their preferences. And sometimes, depending on where you're recording your client's files, this could be labeled as client notes or um, reminders. So without further ado, let's dive deep into what those three things are. The first one is client conversations. Let's just get the creepiest one out of the way. If you were the only one reading these files, write down the touch points of your client conversations. Now, if you're working in a multidisciplinary clinic, you may need to um, censor what you write. I, would, I personally would leave out the really personal stuff, but if you are the only one reading your client's files, you're in private practice, go nuts their marriage, their partner, their work, their homeschooling, whatever it is that they're going through, I highly recommend keeping a little bit of a log here. And honestly, this is just so that the next time you see the client or the next time you write them a follow-up email to bring them in for a massage treatment, it's a point of contact, a point of departure. It's a place where you can connect with your client. And ultimately, this is gonna tell your client that you care you would be surprised how many clients say, oh, you remember. Actually, I don't remember. I have a horrible memory, but I write it down so that I recall. <laughs> Difference between recall and remember. Number two, record your client's behaviors and habits. This is the second creepy thing. However, honestly, this is great if you wanna record things like uh, the client was late today, the client came to the treatment after the yoga class, the client came to the treatment on a Friday because this is the start of their weekend or they only come on Saturdays. I find that clients' behaviors around massage therapy tend to follow a pattern. And these little nuances are things that you can use to tailor the massage experience to your client. If they're late consistently and you have log of that, that means that you can have a conversation with them. If they come on, say, only Saturdays, then you, like, you know to kind of give them a little extra pampering TLC. If your client partners their massage with a yoga practice, you can ask them about it. Um, so I would highly recommend logging client habits. Maybe your client cries every time that they come to the treatment. Have that box of tissue ready. That's Client Care 101. And the third thing that you can write down in your client files is preferences. Now this is things like the thermophore, blanket, essential oils. Have those things ready for your client based on their preferences. I've had clients who are like, please, no, no blankets. I'm going through menopause. I'm sweaty all the time, all day long. And so even though my default is to put the blanket on the massage table, I know because I log it in the files, not to have that blanket on the table for the client. Don't make them ask twice. They told you in their first massage session with you what their preferences were. So remember it and go above and beyond. Or things like if your client um, requests the exact same essential oil every single massage treatment, then just put it on proactively before they come in. Clients will love that. Like you have customized this experience for them in a way that they don't expect. Now, I don't know if it sounds like a headache to, to record these little nuances, but honestly, the way I look at it is a client is worth easily $1,200 a year at $100 a massage. If they come in once a month, that's $1,200. If they are a happy client, that value of the client is now worth three, four, five, six thousand dollars because they've referred you to other people. And those people then refer you to other people. And you know, this is truly the power of word of mouth. And I wholeheartedly believe that going beyond, above and beyond for your client 
is worth its weight in gold. Instead of looking at your client file as a legal document you are required to uphold, I would look at it as a document that actually works in your favor so that you can give better massage treatments and see the return on investment, develop stronger, longer lasting relationships with your clients and ultimately make more money. I'll see you in the next episode of Virtual Massage Clinic. I welcome you to join our Facebook group called Massage Students. I'd love to see you there. It's exactly what it sounds like. And if we haven't met before, please drop me a direct message on Instagram at Massage Student Pro. Ciao.